Hello, everybody, and welcome to my presentation on collapsed seals. It's a general brief overview of what do we look for, how to assess, and how we can help this condition to improve. When we're discussing the heels and their definition, it's not just about the hoof wall collapse in the heel area, it's a general collapse in the rear portion of the foot behind the widest part of the foot, a lack of surface area, a forward migration of the heel points of the buttress of the heel, and lack of bar development are a few factors and what we can look at the branch term for collapse seals. The hoof wall tubules are bound together by intertubular horn. And each horn tubule has intratubular horn there bound together. These tend to grow in a straight line in the normal hoof, but on the collapsed low weak heels, these tend to bend as they make contact with the ground. Clinical signs of what we see, the mismatch of a toe dorsal wall angle and the heel angle. We see a broken back hoof past an axis. We see heels migrating forward and a lack of alignment. This can be caused by poor conformation, such as long sloping pastons, and camped out appearance. If horses are left too long in between trimming or shoeing cycles, they can go extremely long and there's extra strain on the heels there. Every centimetre of toe growth creates extra force upon the flexor tendon structures, which pass over in the navicular area and attach onto the semi line of a distal phalanx, causing heels to crush further as well. An incorrect diet of poor quality hoof, hoof horn will be a contributing factor to weakness in the back of the foot as well. And also poor quality environments as well, which do tend to allow heels to sink into the ground if it's quite a wet, boggy environment with uh, a lot of bacterial infections taking place, leading to a crack in the central sulcus of a frog and erosion of the strength of the frog that can lead to a low weak heel as well. So how is this diagnosed from a veterinary perspective? Quite a lot of the time it's done through looking, looking at the horse, walk and trot up, but radiographs are extremely useful for both veterinary surgeons and farriers. Here we have lateral medial projections here. It's the best way to assess the eternal aspects of the feet, see what misalignments taking place through the phalanges. The palmar angle of the pedal bone is the angle that the base of the pedal bone makes of the ground. And there are various studies that suggest this, this should be between four and seven degrees uh, in the positive plane. And when we start to get to a zero or a negative angle, that's when significant hill collapse is taking place. It can, can, can take place in some positive palmar angles as well. It's all a case of making sure alignment is in place. We can still get positive palmar angle of the pedal bone, but I still have a misalignment. So it's, it's, it's important the radiograph is taken fairly, re, fairly frequently to ensure the progress is sufficient. When it comes to fairy treatment, like we do for all horses, we walk, watch them walk away. We look for any lamenesses. We look for any abnormalities of gait. We look for any sort of sideways movement of a, of a limb as it passes forward. We've seen how comfortable the horse is to turn. We've seen how the toes landing. And how this, this can also help to formulate our shoeing plan of how we go forwards. So once we're done, pre-shoeing assessment of dynamic flight of the limb. There are a few options that are gonna be available to us. There's a barefoot option. Um, this is an example of a pony that's been turned out to go feral. Not necessarily mega collapse heels here, but an interesting change nonetheless in terms of bar development, heel migration, 
and frog strength. We're looking at the back of the foot there as well. We're looking to see any of a, of a heel bulb collapse and the, the heels are, are strengthening barefoot. This can be a good option for some horses that are turned out and soft going in the winter. Allow the feet just to relax a little bit, get the frog on the same plane as the heels. And just allow everything to settle down a little bit. If you want to apply shoes later, we can do. And it's also sometimes where given some times a break out of shoes will, will help this as well. When it comes to shoeing options, we're going to be looking for an adjustment to the hoof pattern axis. We're going to be looking to hopefully increase the dorsal angle of the pedal bone. And over time, hopefully get a close match of a heel angle and toe angle. It's not always possible to get this in many horses. So we have to be quite mindful of that and be realistic about our expectations. And this is obviously a pre and post on the same day and regular photography and regular assessment will help to determine the progress made. And the trim should focus upon straightening the tubules up a little bit. We can see on the left there, the, the, the huge tubules collapsing in the heel area. So by applying some frog support, which is going to be key for most, if not all treatments of low weak heels in order to get successful outcome. A lot of the time I quite like to use frog support pads of varying materials, some leather, some part leather, part synthetic, some fully synthetic and some heel pads to help unload the rear portion of the hoof. So a lot of the time I combine these with impression material, the soft set and the impression material. There's obviously no access to clean out the frog and the sole here on, on a lot of these. They would be on the flip-flop pad on the right. Uh, but if there's no access available, then applying something like antifungal clay is very beneficial to keep the frog and sole healthy. Sometimes we want to make sure the toe area is open as well, so we don't overload an area that could potentially be, be sore or if the sole's quite flat. I find it would be quite beneficial as well. So we have a toe open and we still have a heel supported. A break over is fitted with the enrollment of a limb in mind. So a, a beveled off toe area will help to facilitate lift off of the, of the limb. And these shoes I like to fit with heel support terminating in an ascending line with a center for fetlock. Sometimes positive pressure can be required in some cases. So a steel frog plate or a steel frog support is beneficial as well. We have a heart bar shoe on the left and a, and a wide webbed bar shoe on the right hand side here. Different functions, different feet different approaches, same principle, engaging the frog and taking strain off the heels uh, and, and sharing the load of a greater surface area. The impression material will hopefully then lead to an increased solar arch as well. More concave shaped solar arch. There are some cases where a self-adjusting palmer angle shoe, sometimes known as banana shoe can be used. This is a composite variety, but there's plenty of steel options as well. Care must be taken with these really to get a, a, a correct diagnosis first and the correct radiography assessment of what's happening internally before applying these. They've been shown to be very useful for creating alignment. Care must also be taken when it comes to fitting these with the, the roller edge fitted at the center of rotation. So there's no rocking back on the on the shoes or an over exaggeration of of the uh, of, of the fit there. So just ensure that there's a 50-50 split behind the centre of rotation and in front of that as well. That's uh, that's it in a nutshell. Graduated shoes. These are also very good for creating alignment and good for cases where deep shoe flexor tendon or the vicar cases, in some cases, have come and respond quite well to these. So a three degree wedge here will help to create alignment over a long period of time. Again, constant radiography will help to, to assess that 
perhaps done every every couple of months if required and this obviously reduces the the force at the back of the foot by by artificially lifting up the area there so how do these progress over time we've applied these shoes now and what results can we expect to get so a lot of the time with low weak heels we quite often have a prolapse frog and the heel bulbs are also prolapsing lower than the height of the heels. This is through normally through open heel shoes or through through feet that aren't supported. So we can see here on the left a, a, a frog that's quite low down to the ground, lower than the heel heights. There's a bit of shininess at the heel bulbs there. The ground's been hitting, the heel bulbs been hitting the ground. And just by applying a frog support pad and some impression material, we have a much improved hoof on the right hand side there. Frog's almost parallel, I'm saying within five months. And the uh, the angulation of the heels now is much more straight and there's less flaring. And that's just by engaging the whole foot. This is another example. This is a hind foot. And we can see by also applying a graduated frog support pad and impression material over a longer period of time, We've created a greater surface area, the rear half of this foot, the heel points of heel have migrated backwards towards the heel bulbs, the far less run forward, and the percentage of toe length over a period of time as well. The images have dated the same day, but it was over a period of about four months. And they were just reassessed through the software on, the, on that particular day, but we can see a significant reduction in toe migration as well. And a much more expanded foot as well. So looking from a lateral view of these hind feet, it's where we started off on the left hand side. And we see over time we have a nine degree increase in the dorsal wall angle. Heel angle has significantly improved too. Still a little bit of progress to make there, but you know, a 15 degree increase is, is good progress. Heel height has increased, but you know, with all fairness, that's probably a little bit of a pad coming in to create that. The fetlock angle has improved too, so there's be less strain on suspensory ligament. And the dorsal wall length has reduced, but again, I think that's probably more down to the process of, of, of normal horseshoeing processes of reducing toe length. And this helps to engage a digital cushion as well by applying this type of support. We can see this is the same horse, you know, only about an hour between these images. We can see the, the area there above the heel bulbs has changed in angle. And I think that's from a frog getting fully loaded and getting fully loaded with a, a, a nice, Frog support with, made up of leather and synthetic material. Break over underneath the toe there has helped to facilitate a little more alignment. We can't see a great deal of the past in the fetlock there, but it has certainly come up since we made this intervention. So we look at some of these horses that land toe first and have low weak heels. We see pre shoeing assessment. Coming across here, the toe first landing, and the rocking back there as the hoof lands as well. As we come after shoeing, you can see a flat hoof landing. Objective measures help to define these. So if we play this one again, Watch that front left come down, toe first, and the rocking back upon landing. And then we come back. You can see the hoof landing much more level. Play that one again, much more level and flat. So 
in conclusion, when it comes to looking at low weak heels, we need to objectively identify these low weak heels and assess them using static and dynamic assessment really. So we're looking at the static images. We're looking at a mismatch of toe and heel angle. We're looking at the migration of the heels from the heel bulbs. We're looking at the lack of bar development. We're looking at contraction between those heels. And we're looking at dynamic assessment. We're looking at any toe first landing, any reluctance to engage the back of the foot. These are all telltale signs. And then we look then to obtain some radiographs of these feet, lateral medial projections. They will help to define the alignment of the lower limb, the palmar angle of the pedal bone, and the, any other abnormalities. They can help us to formulate our shoeing plan. A lot of the time, this involves engaging the whole foot, either through, well, a lot of the time will be through frog support. Sometimes it can be through a graduation or sometimes it can be for a self-adjusting shoe, uh, but it's important to engage a whole foot, not be out of perimeter. I think the reason a lot of these feet get to this position in the, in the first place is because the open heel shoe has been loading, a foot has been mis misfunctioning and has collapsed through the center of the foot of the shoe. So there's been a failure there to support a confirmational default. But by engaging the whole foot, whether that's barefoot or whether that's with shoes, with frog support, that is that will be the key. And then completing a post shoeing analysis, not just applying and, 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 and hoping we make progress, but get before and after images, look at the angulation of the toe and heel angle. See if we can get some post shoeing radiography as well. Uh, so that will help to formulate plans going forward as well. So watch and walk and, and trot up where, where possible. Use slow motion video analysis, and that will help to determine if there's any changes. Hopefully gone from a lot of the time toe first to either flat or heel first. Um, there are some gaze analysis systems now that can help to wirelessly detect hoof landing, which is a gold standard and very useful. And when it comes to working with these cases, I always like to listen to rider feedback and ask how the horses are going, ask how they're performing, and then any adjustments can be made as necessary in response to that feedback. And I'd like to say thank you for listening to this short presentation of a much bigger topic that can be expanded out. But well, hopefully you've got a general overview now of what to look out for and how to identify these and how to progress going forwards. And I hope you can catch me on the next video.